In mathematics, more specifically functional analysis and operator theory, the notion of unbounded operator provides an abstract framework for dealing with differential operators, unbounded observables in quantum mechanics, and other cases. The term, "...unbounded operator", can be misleading, since "...unbounded", should sometimes be understood as not necessarily bounded. Operator should be understood as linear operator, as in the case of bounded operator. The domain of the operator is a linear subspace, not necessarily the whole space. This linear subspace is not necessarily closed, often but not always it is assumed to be dense. In the special case of a bounded operator, still, the domain is usually assumed to be the whole space. In contrast to bounded operators, unbounded operators on a given space do not form an algebra, nor even a linear space, because each one is defined on its own domain. The term «operator» often means «bounded linear operator», but in the context of this article it means «unbounded operator» with the reservations made above. The given space is assumed to be a Hilbert space. Some generalizations to Banach spaces and more general topological vector spaces are possible. Short history The theory of unbounded operators developed in the late 1920s and early 1930s as part of developing a rigorous mathematical framework for quantum mechanics. The theory's development is due to John von Neumann and Marshall Stone. Von Neumann introduced using graphs to analyze unbounded operators in 1936. <laughs> <laughs> Definitions and basic properties Let X, Y be Banach spaces an unbounded operator or simply operator T X Y is a linear map T from a linear subspace D T X the domain of T to the space Y contrary to the usual convention T may not be defined on the whole space X two operators are equal if they have a common domain and they coincide on that common domain an operator T is said to be closed if its graph gamma T is a closed set here, the graph gamma T is a linear subspace of the direct sum x y, defined as the set of all pairs x, t x, where x runs over the domain of T. Explicitly, this means that for every sequence x n of points from the domain of T such that x n x and T x n y, it holds that x belongs to the domain of T and T x equals y. The closeness can also be formulated in terms of the graph norm. An operator T is closed if and only if its domain D T is a complete space with respect to the norm x T equals x two plus T x two. Display style x underscore t equals sqrt x caret two plus t x caret two. An operator t is said to be densely defined if its domain is dense in x. This also includes operators defined on the entire space x, since the whole space is dense in itself. The denseness of the domain is necessary and sufficient for the existence of the adjoint if X and Y are Hilbert spaces and the transpose, see the sections below. 
If T x y is closed, densely defined and continuous on its domain, then its domain is all of x. A densely defined operator T on a Hilbert space H is called bounded from below if T plus A is a positive operator for some real number A. That is, T x, x minus A, x, 2 for all x in the domain of T, or alternatively T x, x A, x, 2 since A is arbitrary. If both T and minus T are bounded from below then T is bounded. Example <laughs> 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 Let C zero one denote the space of continuous functions on the unit interval, and let C one zero one denote the space of continuously differentiable functions. We equip C zero one display style C zero one with the supremum norm. Infinity Display style C D O T underscore inf T making it a Banach space. Define the classical differentiation operator D, DX, C one, zero, one, C, zero, one by the usual formula D D X F X equals lim h zero f x plus h minus f x h x element of zero one Display style left frac d dx f right x equals lim underscore h to zero frac f x plus h f x h q quad for all x in zero one. Every differentiable function is continuous, so c one zero one c zero one. We claim that d dx c zero one c zero one is a well-defined unbounded operator with domain c one zero one. For this, we need to show that d d x display style frac d dx is linear, and then, for example, exhibit some f n n c 1 0 1 display style f underscore n underscore n subset c caret 1 0 1 such that sub n d d X F N infinity equals plus infinity display style sub underscore n frac d dx f underscore n underscore inf t equals plus inf t this is a linear operator, since a linear combination AF plus BG of two continuously differentiable functions F, G is also continuously differentiable, and D D X A F plus B G equals a D D X F plus B D D X G 
Display style left T F R A C D D X right A F plus B G equals of left T F R A C D D X F right plus B left T F R A C D D X G right The operator is not bounded. For example F N zero one Minus one one F N X equals sin two Pi N X Display style begin cases F underscore N zero one two minus one one F underscore N X equals sin two pi N X end cases satisfy F N infinity equals one Display style left f underscore n right underscore inf t equals one, but d d x f n infinity equals two pi n infinity. Display style left left T F R A C D D X F underscore N right right underscore inf T equals two Pi N two inf T as N infinity Display style N two inf T The operator is densely defined and closed the same operator can be treated as an operator ZZ for many choices of Banach space Z and not be bounded between any of them. At the same time, it can be bounded as an operator XY for other pairs of Banach spaces X, Y, and also as operator ZZ for some topological vector spaces Z. As an example, let IR be an open interval and consider D D X C one I C one C I infinity Display style frac D DX left C carrot one I C D O T underscore C carrot one right to left carbon monoiodide C D O T underscore inf T right where F C one equals F infinity plus F infinity display style F underscore C carrot 1 equals F underscore inf T plus F underscore inf T topic adjoint The adjoint of an unbounded operator can be defined in two equivalent ways. Let T, D, T, H1, H2 be an unbounded operator between Hilbert spaces. First, it can be defined in a way analogous to how one defines the adjoint of a bounded operator. Namely, the adjoint T, D, T asterisk H two H one of T is defined as an operator with the property T X Y two equals X T Y one X element of D T 
Display style Langle TX mid Y Wrangle underscore two equals left Langle X mid T carrot asterisk Y right Wrangle underscore one Q quad X in D T More precisely, T is defined in the following way. If Y element of H two is such that X T X Y display style x mapsto langle t x mid y wrangle is a continuous linear functional on the domain of T. Then y is declared to be an element of D T asterisk, and after extending the linear functional to the whole space via the Hahn Banach theorem, it is possible to find a z in H one such that T x Y two equals x z one x element of d t display style Langle t x mid y wrangle underscore two equals Langle x mid z wrangle underscore one q quad x in d t since the dual of a Hilbert space can be identified with the set of linear functionals given by the inner product for each y, z is uniquely determined if and only if the so extended linear functional was densely defined, i.e., if T is densely defined. Finally, letting T y equals z completes the construction of T. Note that T exists if and only if T is densely defined. By definition, the domain of T consists of elements Y in H2 such that X T X Y Displaystyle X Mapsto Langle T X mid Y Wrangle is continuous on the domain of T. Consequently, the domain of T could be anything, it could be trivial, i.e., contains only zero. It may happen that the domain of T is a closed hyperplane and T vanishes everywhere on the domain. Thus, boundedness of T on its domain does not imply boundedness of T. On the other hand, if T is defined on the whole space, then T is bounded on its domain and therefore can be extended by continuity to a bounded operator on the whole space. If the domain of T is dense, then it has its adjoint T. The closed densely defined operator T is bounded if and only if T is bounded. The other equivalent definition of the adjoint can be obtained by noticing a general fact. Define a linear operator J as follows J H 1 H 2 H 2 H one J X Y equals minus Y X Display style begin cases J H underscore one O plus H underscore two to H underscore two O plus H underscore one J X O plus Y equals Y O plus X end cases Since J is an isometric surjection, it is unitary. Hence, J gamma T is the graph of some operator S if and only if T is densely defined. A simple calculation shows that this sum S satisfies T X Y two equals X S Y 1 
Display style Langle TX mid Y Wrangle underscore two equals Langle X mid C Wrangle underscore one For every X in the domain of T thus, S is the adjoint of T. It follows immediately from the above definition that the adjoint T is closed. In particular, a self-adjoint operator i.e. T topic T is closed an operator T is closed and densely defined if and only if T T some well known properties for bounded operators generalize to closed densely defined operators the kernel of a closed operator is closed Moreover, the kernel of a closed densely defined operator T, H1 H2 coincides with the orthogonal complement of the range of the adjoint. That is Ker T equals Ran T Display style operator name cur t equals operator name ran t caret asterisk caret bot. Von Neumann's theorem states that t t and t t are self-adjoint, and that i plus t t and i plus t t both have bounded inverses. If t has trivial kernel, t has dense range by the above identity. Moreover. T is surjective if and only if there is a k greater than zero such that f 2 k t f 1 for all f in d t. This is essentially a variant of the so-called closed range theorem. In particular, t has closed range if and only if t has closed range. In contrast to the bounded case, it is not necessary that t s equals s t, since, for example, it is even possible that t s doesn't exist. This is, however, the case if, for example, t is bounded. A densely defined, closed operator T is called normal if it satisfies the following equivalent conditions T T equals T T The domain of T is equal to the domain of T, and, T X, equals, T X, for every X in this domain There exist self-adjoint operators A, B such that T Topic A plus Ib T A Ib and Tx two equals ax two plus Bx two for every x in the domain of T every self adjoint operator is normal equals Topic Transpose Equals. Let T be one B two be an operator between Banach spaces. Then the transpose or dual T B two B one display style T B underscore two carrot asterisk two B underscore one carrot asterisk of T is an operator satisfying T X Y equals X T Y display style Langle T X Y Wrangle equals Langle X T Wrangle for all X in B one and Y in B two asterisk here we use the notation x x equals x x display style langle x x wrangle equals x x 
The necessary and sufficient condition for the transpose of T to exist is that T is densely defined, for essentially the same reason as to adjoints, as discussed above. For any Hilbert space H, there is the anti-linear isomorphism J H H Displaystyle J, H carrot, asterisk to H given by JF equals Y, where F X equals X Y H X element of H Display style f x equals Langle x mid y wrangle underscore h x in h. Through this isomorphism, the transpose T relates to the adjoint T in the following way: T equals j one T j two Minus one display style t caret asterisk equals j underscore one t j underscore two caret minus one where j j h j h j Display style j underscore j h underscore j carrot asterisk to h underscore j. For the finite dimensional case, this corresponds to the fact that the adjoint of a matrix is its conjugate transpose. Note that this gives the definition of adjoint in terms of a transpose. Topic. Closed linear operators Closed linear operators are a class of linear operators on Banach spaces. They are more general than bounded operators, and therefore not necessarily continuous, but they still retain nice enough properties that one can define the spectrum and with certain assumptions, functional calculus for such operators. Many important linear operators which fail to be bounded turn out to be closed, such as the derivative and a large class of differential operators. Let x, y be two Banach spaces. A linear operator A, D A x y is closed if for every sequence x n in D A converging to x in x such that A x n y element of y as n infinity 1 has x element a D A and ax equals y. Equivalently, A is closed if its graph is closed in the direct sum x y, Given a linear operator A, not necessarily closed, if the closure of its graph in xy happens to be the graph of some operator, that operator is called the closure of A, and we say that A is closable. Denote the closure of A by A. It follows that A is the restriction of A to D A. A core or essential domain of a closable operator is a subset C of D A such that the closure of the restriction of A to C is A. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Basic properties. Any closed linear operator defined on the whole space X is bounded. This is the closed graph theorem. Additionally, the following properties are easily checked. If A is closed then a minus lambda I is closed where lambda is a scalar and I is the identity function. If A is closed, then its kernel or null space is a closed subspace of X. If A is closed and injective, then its inverse a minus 1 is also closed. 
An operator A admits a closure if and only if for every pair of sequences xn and yn in D A both converging to x, such that both axn and ein converge, one has lim axn equals lim ein equals topic example topic consider the derivative operator a d dx where x topic y C A B is the Banach space of all continuous functions on an interval A B. If one takes its domain D A to be C one A B, then A is a closed operator, which is not bounded. On the other hand, if D A equals C infinity A B, then A will no longer be closed, but it will be closable, with the closure being its extension defined on C one A B equals Topic Symmetric operators and self adjoint operators equals an operator T on a Hilbert space is symmetric if and only if for each x and y in the domain of T we have T x y equals x T y display style Langle TX mid y wrangle equals Langle X mid tie wrangle a densely defined operator T is symmetric if and only if it agrees with its adjoint T restricted to the domain of T, in other words when T is an extension of T in general, if T is densely defined and symmetric, the domain of the adjoint T need not equal the domain of T if T is symmetric and the domain of T and the domain of the adjoint coincide, then we say that T is self-adjoint. Note that, when T is self-adjoint, the existence of the adjoint implies that T is densely defined and since T is necessarily closed, T is closed. A densely defined operator T is symmetric, if the subspace γ defined in a previous section is orthogonal to its image J T under J where J x, y, equals y, x. .Equivalently, an operator T is self-adjoint if it is densely defined, closed, symmetric, and satisfies the fourth condition, both operators T, i, T plus i are surjective, that is, is, map the domain of T onto the whole space H. In other words, for every x in H there exist y and z in the domain of T such that tie, i y. <laughs> x and T z plus is X, an operator T is self-adjoint, if the two subspaces γ T, J gamma T are orthogonal and their sum is the whole space H H style H O plus H. This approach does not cover non-densely defined closed operators. Non-densely defined symmetric operators can be defined directly or via graphs, but not via adjoint operators. A symmetric operator is often studied via its Cayley transform. An operator T on a complex Hilbert space is symmetric if and only if its quadratic form is real, that is, the number T x x display style mid x wrangle 
is real for all x in the domain of T. A densely defined closed symmetric operator T is self adjoint if and only if T is symmetric. It may happen that it is not. A densely defined operator T is called positive or non-negative if its quadratic form is non-negative, that is, T x x zero. Display style Langle T x mid x wrangle G E Q zero. For all x in the domain of T such operator is necessarily symmetric. The operator T T is self-adjoint and positive for every densely defined, closed T. The spectral theorem applies to self-adjoint operators and moreover, to normal operators, but not to densely defined, closed operators in general, since in this case the spectrum can be empty, a symmetric operator defined everywhere is closed, therefore bounded, which is the Hellinger-Turplitz theorem. Extension related. By definition, an operator T is an extension of an operator S if γ S γ T. An equivalent direct definition, for every x in the domain of S, x belongs to the domain of T and S x equals T x. Note that an everywhere defined extension exists for every operator, which is a purely algebraic fact explained at discontinuous linear map hashtag general existence theorem and based on the axiom of choice. If the given operator is not bounded then the extension is a discontinuous linear map. It is of little use since it cannot preserve important properties of the given operator see below, and usually is highly non-unique. An operator T is called closable if it satisfies the following equivalent conditions T has a closed extension the closure of the graph of T is the graph of some operator for every sequence xn of points from the domain of T such that xn0 and also txn y it holds that y equals 0, not all operators are closable, a closable operator T has the least closed extension T T called the closure of T. The closure of the graph of T is equal to the graph of T. Display style overline T. Other, non-minimal closed extensions may exist. A densely defined operator T is closable if and only if T is densely defined. In this case, T equals T Display style overline t equals t caret asterisk asterisk and t equals t display style overline t caret asterisk equals t caret asterisk if S is densely defined and T is an extension of S then S is an extension of T, every symmetric operator is closable, a symmetric operator is called maximal symmetric if it has no symmetric extensions, except for itself, every self-adjoint operator is maximal symmetric. The converse is wrong, an operator is called essentially self-adjoint if its closure is self-adjoint, an operator is essentially self-adjoint if and only if it has one and only one self-adjoint extension, a symmetric operator may have more than one self-adjoint extension, and even a continuum of them, a densely defined, symmetric operator T is essentially self-adjoint if and only if both operators as t, i, t plus i have dense range, let t be a densely defined operator. Denoting the relation, t is an extension of s by s t a conventional abbreviation for gamma s gamma t one has the following 
If T is symmetric then T T T. If T is closed and symmetric then T equals T T. If T is self-adjoint then T. T T. If T is essentially self-adjoint then T T equals T equals topic importance of self adjoint operators equals the class of self adjoint operators is especially important in mathematical physics every self adjoint operator is densely defined closed and symmetric the converse holds for bounded operators but fails in general. Self-adjointness is substantially more restricting than these three properties. The famous spectral theorem holds for self-adjoint operators. In combination with Stone's theorem on one-parameter unitary groups it shows that self-adjoint operators are precisely the infinitesimal generators of strongly continuous one-parameter unitary groups, see self-adjoint operator hash self-adjoint extensions in quantum mechanics such unitary groups are especially important for describing time evolution in classical and quantum mechanics. See also Hilbert space hashtag unbounded operators Stone von Neumann theorem bounded operator equals equals notes <laughs>